In the previous video, we saw that a system of simultaneous equations can be interpreted as a collection of hyperplanes in n-dimensional space, where n is the number of variables, and that the set of solutions is the set of points where those planes intersect. So that could be a single point, or it could be a line, or it could be a plane, or it could be something higher dimensional, and we don't really have the language for talking about that yet. So the correct language is the language of subspaces. So what is a subspace? A subset V inside Rn is a linear subspace if two uh, conditions hold. So first of all, for all V and W in V, uh, V plus W is also in V. Okay, so this is saying that it's closed under addition. If you take two vectors and add them, it's still in the subspace. Second condition is it's closed under rescaling. So for all V and V, and all lambda in R, um, lambda V is in V. So it's closed under rescaling. So you should think of this as some sort of flat plane-like object inside n-dimensional space. So first thing to notice about linear subspaces is they always contain the origin. So linear subspaces always contain 0, 0, 0, 0. Why is that? Well, if you look at these um, conditions that have to hold, um, Oh, I should say non-empty linear subspaces, or you could have an empty linear subspace. But if you have a non-empty linear subspace, then you can just take any element, V, and rescale it by zero, because lambda equals zero is allowed here, and then you get zero. Okay. So this is not quite the right object for us to study at the moment because our subspaces are supposed to be the sets of solutions to our equations, but our equations might not have 0, 0, 0, 0 as a solution, right? So, you know, this uh, system, for example, that I keep coming back to just out of pure lack of imagination, 0, 0 is not a solution. You know, the solution was uh, x equals 1, y equals 2. Um, so, you know, the set of solutions is not a linear subspace in this case. So it's something else. It's called an affine subspace. So uh, V in Rn is called an affine subspace. if there exists uh, a vector w in Rn and a linear subspace uh, running out of letters u, I guess, inside Rn, such that v is the set of points of the form w plus u where U runs over all the elements of capital U. So you should think of this, what is this funny uh, thing in the brackets here? I'm going to write it as W plus capital U. And you should think of it as the translate of U in the W direction. So let's just draw a picture. Here's U. Here's W. And 
now I'm just going to take this subspace U and translate it until it sits at the tip of W. So this is capital U, this is little w, and this is W+. plus. Okay, so affine subspaces are obtained by taking linear subspaces and translating them. And here's the reason we care about them. So lemma, you know, given a system of simultaneous equations, simultaneous linear equations, uh, A, V equals B, um, the set of solutions is an affine subspace. of Rn, where n here is the number of variables. So v is like x1 up to xn. Um, note that it is a linear subspace if and only if b is zero. So this i with two f's is if and only if. It's like some silly shorthand thing. Um, okay, let's prove this. First, let's assume that b is zero. And then we'll prove that it, the set of solutions is a linear subspace. So then if V is a solution and W is a solution, or maybe, maybe let's call it V prime because W is, is going to be something else. So let's suppose that V is a solution and V prime is a solution. Then, well, A V plus V prime is A V plus a v prime which is 0 plus 0 which is 0 that's the vector 0 uh, so v plus v prime is a solution similarly if v is a solution and lambda is a number then a v lambda is lambda a v which is lambda times zero, which is zero. And that tells us that lambda v is a solution. So the set of solutions satisfies these two conditions from the definition of a subspace. Note also a non-empty subspace. Um, because uh, v equals 0 is always a solution. To the equation a v equals 0. OK, so if b is 0, then the set of solutions is a linear subspace. Now, suppose that b is not 0. So two things can happen. Either there's no solutions, and if there's no solutions, then we're done, because the empty set satisfies um, these two conditions here, right? For all V and W in the empty set, their sum is also in the empty set because there's nothing to check, and similarly for the rescaling. Um, or, I don't need to say or there, I think I needed to say or to complete the sentence I was saying, but I don't need to write it. So if there's no solutions, we're done. If there are solutions, so if W is a solution, i.e. 
a w equals b then given an, another solution so given any other solution v um, v minus w satisfies the following equation a v minus w is a v minus a w and that's b minus b which is zero so uh, let's come up with a notation for this let's write s for the set of solutions And let's write S0 for the set of solutions of this alternative equation A V equals 0. Now let me get another page. So what we've showed is that um, S equals W plus S0. In other words, if you start with a solution S0, uh, sorry, V of S0, uh, sorry, let me start that sentence again. So, um, if U is in S0, then W plus U is in S. That's just because A of W plus U is A W plus A u which is b plus 0 which is b so that tells us w plus u is in s and conversely what we showed up here was um, if v is in s then uh, v minus w is in s0 that's what we showed on the previous line and that's those two implications tell us that S is W plus S zero. S zero is a linear subspace by part A up here, where we assume that B is zero. Right, we've already showed this, um, and therefore S is an affine subspace. I don't want to say too much more about subspaces because you'll see a lot more about them in future courses on linear algebra. Uh, I just want to give you another example of a nice thing that's true about subspaces which you can prove immediately from the um, the definition. So if V and W are linear subspaces then so is V intersect W. Okay, this is also true for affine subspaces of course, just think about it. And you can you can I mean you can try and prove it. It's just slightly easier to prove the uh, the linear case because you just have to check the two axioms. So what are those axioms? Well let's pick two vectors and let's not call them V and W because we've got those letters already being used. So let's say A uh, and B are in V intersect W. Well then A is in V and B is in V so because V is a linear subspace A plus B is also in V and similarly A is in W B is in W so their sum is also in W because W is a subspace and therefore their sum is in both so that tells us a plus b is in the intersection and it's very similar for rescalings uh, so lambda a is in v uh, lambda a is also in w so lambda a is in v intersect w okay so if you take two linear subspaces and you intersect them 
you get another linear subspace. And the same is true if you take two affine subspaces and you can try and prove that yourselves. Um, another sort of nice fact um, which I probably won't bother to prove but it's it's good to know um, which is that an affine subspace uh, subspace is linear if and only if it contains the origin I, I'm ignoring the empty set here, so probably that is a counterexample to what I just said, but if you ignore the empty set, this is true. Okay, so you now have something of a language for talking about lines and planes and things in higher and higher dimensions. Um, they're called subspaces, and uh, they behave the way you want them to. Um, you know, if you intersect them, they st you still get a subspace, maybe lower dimension potentially. In the same way intersecting two planes might give you a line um, and the link with simultaneous equations is this key lemma here that the space of solutions is an affine subspace of rn okay in the next video we will be talking about inverses of matrices which is basically trying to answer the question can you divide by a matrix